What's up everyone, it's Scotty with MoneyVest and in this video I wanted to talk a little bit about technical trends of the overall market. So we're not going to touch on the macros, we're not going to touch about interest rates or inflation or unemployment, but in this video I want to strictly go over the technical analysis on the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq to help you better understand the risk and the reward in the current market environment and to better help you plan your trades as well. So hope you guys enjoyed this video, find it helpful. If you do, make sure that you drop a like, subscribe to the channel. Link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below. The first week of the month is the best time to join. You get access to everything, all member benefits, including our intrinsic value spreadsheets, members only private videos, and of course, a lot of alerts as well. As I've already mentioned in my previous videos, September, if it ends up being red and if seasonality takes over and we do end up seeing some more potential downside, I will be dollar cost averaging. And if you want to get access to all the alerts and exactly find out what I'm buying, when I'm buying it and what options I'm trading, Again, links are going to be down below. We'd love to have you on board. So this right here is basically just a very basic level understanding of the percentage of stocks that are trading above or below their moving averages. So right now, this chart basically shows us the percentage of stocks trading above their 20-day moving average, which is a good indicator of a short-term overall trend. And we did get up to as high as 62%. And in the past, you'll notice that every time you get up to over 93%, a pullback and a dip is almost a certainty. Like that almost always happens. And that's exactly what we witnessed in the month of August. So this right here was the entire uh, sell-off. Then of course, we saw a little bit of recovery back up 62%. And now we're starting to see that pullback once again. Now, what's really interesting here is not the level that we got up to before and what the level we got up to now but instead the fact that we did not get up to the level as before. In fact, we are making a lower high on this potential chart. So what you will notice is that previously we got up to as much as 90, 93%. This time around, we only got up to as much as 62 to 65%. So the market momentum back up was not as strong as what we has what we have witnessed before. This right here is another chart, but this time around, we're going over to the 200 simple moving average instead of the 20 day moving average. And what you'll notice is that both times, and this is going back as far as 2022 and 2023, we got tapped out at around 80%, right? Just a little bit under 80%. So 80% of stocks trading above their 200 day moving average. And eventually we saw a reversal back down. And right now, once again, we are at 51%. So still majority of the market's trading above its 200 day moving average, but we are now starting to pull right back down and potentially will come down to this green rectangle, which is going to be in the 30, mid 30s, uh, once again, where we have traded before in earlier this year. Now, I wanna go over a very, very easy and basic level understanding of trends, okay? There's an uptrend in the market and there's a downtrend in the market. Every time you analyze or every time you look at the market, right, S&P, NASDAQ, whatever it is, even for stocks, you're going to find them in either an uptrend or a downtrend, okay? You're going to find them most of the time. I would say 90% of the times, stocks, indexes, commodities, cryptos, everything will either be in an uptrend or in a downtrend. Our job is to better understand and assess what we're in, right? Whether we're in an uptrend or a downtrend. Now, that's the easy part. You can look at a chart and you have to just match the chart from this, and understand whether we're in a downtrend or an uptrend. So downtrend is nothing but a downtrending chart, right? So it's got lower highs and lower lows. So it's consistently going down. And an uptrend is the exact opposite, right? It's an uptrend. So it's making higher highs and higher lows and it's going up. And when it says, when people say buy the dip, they're more specifically referring to the uptrend, right? Because this higher low is the dip itself because it's happening in the context of an uptrend. When it says catching a falling knife, this basically means you know, in a downtrend because the the stock price or the index or whatever, it's still very much in the context of a downtrend. So dollar cost averaging here doesn't make much sense because you're only going to get a small move back up before it trends lower, before it continues to accelerate to the downside. So very basic level understanding. And I'm sure people who are familiar with technical analysis understand that there are two directions, uptrend and a downtrend. And that's how most stocks and indexes trade. That's the easy part. Now, what is the most difficult part and the most challenging part is to understand when a downtrend will become an uptrend or when an uptrend will actually reverse to a downtrend. That is the key, right? So we can understand the trend overall. We can understand, okay, the market's an uptrend, market's a downtrend. But the more difficult thing to do is to better understand when that direction will change, right? And as Howard Marks talks about in his book, you know, the most important thing, 
he talks about markets are always going to be moving in pendulums, right? There's one side, one extreme of that pendulum is greed and euphoria and, you know, just buying aggressively. The other side of that pendulum is fear and panic selling and just, you know, risk, uh, lack of risk assessment, all those things. So we know that markets are going to be in one of these extremes at any given moment, but we just don't know how long the markets are going to stay there. And when are we going to reverse back to the other side? And how far extreme are we going to go to the other side, right? So it's the same thing. Like, we don't know how long the markets are going to be in a downtrend and when are they going to reverse. That's the hard part. We understand that they're in an uptrend or a downtrend. We just can't figure out the reversal. Now, here's a very neat technique that I'm going to show you guys in a technical analysis to better understand when there are early signs of when the technical trend is starting to reverse, right? That's the whole idea. And I like to look at my charts, um, you know, just kind of remove everything, right? Remove the volumes, remove the moving averages, remove all the noise and just look at the price action because the candlesticks itself, they tell you the price action itself. This is real people trading real capital and everything is kind of visualized on the charts, right? Because charts don't lie. These are all real facts. So what I have for you here is S&P 500. We're going to go back to the S&P 500. I'm going to specifically point out two areas of strength or weakness in the market based on the price action itself. It's going to be more educational and a little bit of analysis as well. And I'll share with you why this right here is a little bit more concerning from a reversal standpoint, right? So and a lot of you guys who are experienced technical analysts, you might already know what I'm talking about. But this right here is my entire technical breakdown that I wanted to have. Okay, so S&P 500 is not showing up here. Ah, man, I did this entire analysis. Maybe it's over here. Let me just quickly check. Uh, I did the entire analysis and it's not here. Nope, that's not it. But anyway, so as I was saying, I'm going to redo it. But the bottom line is, so what we have here is higher lows, right? So consistently making higher lows over here for the S&P 500. So you'll notice that every time it comes down, to that support, it gets validated and pushes right back up. So I'm going to put that in green because that's a very nice, consistent uptrend, right? We're in an uptrend because we're making higher highs and we're also making higher lows for the market. Uh, or maybe it was NASDAQ here. Let me go back. Oh, it was NASDAQ. Okay, it was NASDAQ. So we were talking about NASDAQ earlier. So let me just go over this first and then I'll jump back over to the S&P 500. So uh, what I have over here is the NASDAQ in September of 2020. So it was, again, in a very nice higher low. So you can see that green area that's an uptrend that's a higher high and higher low now a couple times there were signals in the market that it was starting to weaken and what i mean by that is that over here you'll notice that we didn't make a higher low instead we make a horizontal high right we didn't make a higher high instead we make a horizontal high right so meaning that we went into the same price as we did in february of 21 so these two were equivalent to each other but that was compensated by the market by making a higher low so that still represented strength from a buyer's perspective that we didn't quite go down to as low as March of 2020 when this pullback happened, but instead when this pullback took place, we made a higher low. So that still kept us within the context of this uptrend. And of course, what followed was another really higher low. So this right here was a very nice, uh, you know, new all-time high for the market, for the NASDAQ, uh, and of course, pushing higher than this previous high. This right here was another signal another early signs of potential weakness because you'll notice that we actually printed a lower low so what you'll notice over here is that the nasdaq actually went lower 14,200 compared to over here uh where it basically bottomed back in august of 21 so we obviously printed a higher low so that was a first sign of an early weakness that okay we need to be careful here but that again was compensated with the with the idea that this right here ended up being a higher high compared to over here. So we didn't quite get a lower high and a lower low. What we really got here was a lower low and then a higher high. So we were still in the context of this uptrend. Now, guess what happened in late 2021, early 2022? We printed both a lower high and a lower low. So this right here was a lower high compared to the all-time high back in November of 21. Not only that, you can see that this right here was the low and we ended up going even lower. So that right there, the yellow line you see, that's the lower low. So that was an early signal for a trend reversal because not only did we make a lower high, we ended up making a lower low for the market as well. So that is an early sign that, okay, the trend is shifting from an uptrend to potentially a downtrend. Guess what happened? Of course, we know what happened in 2022. We started moving downwards, right? So we started making lower highs and lower lows. So again, you can constantly see that in the chart. Lower lows are being formed, 
lower highs are being formed, the market keeps on going lower than it did the previous time, and it also is making lower highs. So that is a little bit of a downtrend for the overall market. Now, once again, within the context of a downtrend, we start to see some burst of strength. So you can see markets making a higher high here, but that again was overshadowed by the idea the market ended up making a lower low. So we didn't quite get both. We only got one. We only got a higher high, but we got another lower low with it. Well, then guess what? Fast forward to October and November of 2022. Guess what happened here? We got a little bit of a horizontal low. And at the same time, we printed with a higher high. So higher high and then, of course, eventually a higher low. So you can see that both of those happened at the same time with the markets printing both a higher high and a higher low. And then since we've been in a very nice uptrend for the market. The reason why this is now so interesting is because where we are with relation to the overall market. And you can see the both times that I've pointed out in yellows is the reversal for the market, right? And this is where we are. And I'm not saying that this is actually going to lead to a reversal of a downtrend here now. It's going to be a starting point, but it is something to keep in mind from a technical analysis perspective because that's how markets have played out. That's how technical charts have played out. And as you will notice, the markets today, the NASDAQ is down 1.3% for a reason. This right here, lower high compared to where we were back in July. Not to mention the lower low that just formed. This right here is lower in August compared to where we were back in June. So does that look familiar to you guys? It does to me. And again, I'm not saying that this is going to actually lead to this potential downtrend where we end up selling off even further. We start making lower highs and lower lows. No, but it's something to keep in mind because from a trading perspective, from a technical analysis perspective, this is what traders watch the overall trends of the market, right? Whether we're in an uptrend, a downtrend, what's the reversal situation looking like? And it's never a good catalyst if you do see a lower high. Lower high is a sign of weakness. Lower low is a sign of weakness from a technical standpoint. Um, so yeah, just wanted to go over that. Hopefully this was a little bit more educational and gave you a bit of an understanding on where we are. Uh, we're still in the context of this uptrend, at least in my book, unless unless we break down the most important level, which is going to be the low from August 18th. And that's going to be 13,161. So this right here is a very, very, very important support for the NASDAQ. We're still ways away from those levels. I mean, we're at least four and a half, close to 5% away. If the market finds its, itself down to that level, you better believe it. The bulls need to step in. If they don't, well, guess what? We're going to print another lower low and that would really just kickstart an official downtrend for the market, in my opinion. Right now, we're still in the context of this uptrend, which is going to be that green sort of range, which obviously started in October. So this right here is the overall uptrend, which I believe we're still in. So this right here is going to be where we are. But the moment, the moment I believe you break down below this right here, that 13,150, 13,100 level is when we have to be incredibly careful. And I think same thing goes true with S&P 500, as you can see right now. I don't have all the other technicals on this, but you can see that this right here, lower high. Uh, and as unfortunate as it is, it also seems like a bit of a lower low. So this is a bit of a downtrend that's f starting to form for the market. Um, I actually didn't expect the market to sell off the way that they're doing right now on the day today. Um, I know the last couple of days have been pretty red, um, but of course, very important support level. It's going to stay put roughly around 4,300. The moment the S&P breaks down below this is when the concern begins from a technical standpoint in terms of a downtrend. So hopefully this was a little bit of a helpful video and uh, gave you some context as to where we are in this overall technical chart and this pattern. Of course, we got lots of macros to look forward to as well. But uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Find it helpful. Make sure that you drop a like, subscribe to the channel. As always, happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.